Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay. Today's video is this rainbow trout. This is a start to finish instructional video. It only takes two tools. It takes an inch and a half inch, a bench knife, and a five millimeter V tool. I use a palm tool for this. I also would recommend if you have it, a seven millimeter uh, number eight or number seven would be fine as well to help get into those weird areas. But this is very straightforward, very straightforward. It's just a couple of difficult cuts here and uh, let's get into it. But quickly first, this video is sponsored by Fundamentals of Wood Carving. It's an online resource that I created to help folks learn to carve realistic portraits in wood, but it's expanded into all kinds of projects, including a puppy dog. I just added this one. So if you want to learn to carve uh, all sorts of things, including a Labrador retriever relief carving, or uh, just a whole host of projects, including realistic portraits, like I said, uh, like this one, then check out the online school. This is there on the school and the link below. So that's that. Let's get into it. So I'm using a one by one by four inch piece of wood cut diagonally with an inch and a half blade, as well as a ruler, a pencil, a leather strap, here's that leather strap, and a VTOL, this is a five millimeter V, uh, it's a 60 degree V. And an additional tool you can have uh, or use to create textures is this little spindle uh, texturing thing. Now I don't know what this is called exactly. You can buy them uh, at carving stores, but they create little textures, little dimples, and that can be an ind indicator of scales. And so I'll use that as we progress. The first thing I wanna do though, is about an inch and uh, three quarters from the head, or from one end, kind of deciding which end would be the head. I'm gonna create a V cut. So just double checking that really quick, an inch and three quarters, yep. So I'll make that mark with my pencil. I've already done that, so I'm kind of skipping ahead here. Then I'll create a V cut. This V cut is comprised of two cuts that are about the same angle, meeting each other at the base and creating a V. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that process, creating that V shape as I go back and forth, coming in 3 eighths of an inch deep. So I want this V to be 3 eighths inch deep. And I should also say, if you don't have a carving glove, get one on, at least get one on that non-dominant hand or that holding hand, whatever hand is holding that piece of wood, it's gonna protect your hand. Uh, another thumb guard would be fine as well on your dominant hand or the knife holding hand. Anyway, I'm gonna transition uh, from this 3 8 inch cut to a, a gradual sliding cut that goes to about, I'm gonna say 5 eighths of an inch or so. Let's see if that's right. Yeah, about 5 eighths of an inch. So starting at 3 8 inch and, and gently kind of rounding over to a um, uh, 5 eighths inch cut. One thing that's really important to keep track of um, is the, the angle of your cut. Now when I'm making this cut, if my blade is tilted like so, I've got a different measurement at the back side than I do the top side. So I want to make sure I'm, I'm cutting close to parallel to the top of the fish. And that's really harder to do than one would think. Okay, it might help to take some of these hard, sharp corners off. In fact, that's what I'm gonna do now, really quickly, because I can feel them jabbing into my hand. Owie. Okay, that's better. All right. Better. Okay, back to it. Continuing to taper. And kind of round that nose, like so. That's a pretty good shape. All right, very good. And the same thing on the other side, except on this side, it's gonna start about two inches down. Instead of an inch and three quarter from the front, we're gonna go two inches down. So this one's set back a half an inch more. So I'll take the ruler measure from the head, two inches back, and then create a V cut right at that two inch mark. This one's also gonna be a little bit uh, deeper than the last one. Well, it actually, let's, let's fact check that. It might be about the same. Yeah, half an inch actually. So slightly deeper than that 3 8 inch cut at the top. Back and forth, back and forth with that V cut. Until we're at about a half inch of depth, like so. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. A, drag, a gradual transition Transitioning that belly of the fish. 
just like that, okay? Checking to make sure we're square. We're not angling it in too much. Not too bad. All right, now I'm gonna come over the opposite side of this dorsal fin, this top fin, and I'm gonna create a cut as the equal but opposite uh, angle of this initial cut that we made at the top of the dorsal, just obviously in the opposite direction, right? So I'm gonna make a V cut. Just like so. Okay. Now the biggest fin, or the uh, caudal fin, if I'm saying that right, C-A-U-D-A-L, yeah, that looks right, caudal, is about three quarters of an inch wide. So I'm gonna narrow the back of the piece of wood uh, to about three quarters of an inch, and you can mark that with your pencil and your measuring device, your uh, ruler in this case, just like so. And just. Uh, Indicating there. All right. There you go. All right, now I'm going to uh, create a very soft V cut here. This is about, uh, I'll say, a quarter of an inch from the back of this caudal fin. Actually, more like a half an inch if I fact check. Let's see. Yep, half an inch from the base or the back of the caudal fin. And a soft V cut. So not a big transition, a soft one. It's outlining the caudal fin there. Back and forth. Not trying to take out too much at once, otherwise we'll lose control and split the wood. Little tiny bites. All right, so this is where we're at so far, okay? We've come about a half an inch from the backside and created a gradual transition, or V. All right, now we wanna create the anal fin. <laughs> what a great name for that fin. The anal fin is a back, back film fin closer to the uh, caudal fin. And to do that, I'm gonna measure uh, just about, I uh, will say an inch and, uh, let's say an inch and seven eighths. Uh, Back from the caudal fin is where this next uh, kind of cut is going to exist. And it's really in this valley, uh, the same valley that we've already established for that caudal fin. So we're going to take small chunks, being very careful not to damage uh, or flake off that caudal fin. Okay, and the same thing up top. Soft cut. Seven eighths from the back. When I say seven eighths, I'm referring to the, the deepest part of that cut. That's where that seven eighths line. Okay, there's that. Okay. Okay, so it's at this point I'm gonna to come to the opposite side of that uh, uh, anal fin, and I'm gonna define that. So right at that peak, coming back in with a soft V cut. So, and one of the more subtle fins is the adipose fin. It's at the back side of the top of the fish, and it's very subtle. And this one, I'm gonna say is living, let's see if it's a full inch. Yep, a, a full inch from the back is that peak. So on either side of that inch mark, we're gonna create a little bit of a pyramid, a softer pyramid. Not a softer, I mean a, a small pyramid. That's that adipose, or uh, yeah, adipose fin. Okay, just like so. 
and we've got some nice little humps around here and we can start to create the shapes of them. Now, the uh, pelvic uh, fin actually comes out toward us at an angle, so we're gonna have to do some tricky stuff there to get that to come out. But before we get too caught up into that, I wanna do a little drawing of the pectoral fin. Now, we don't have to make this project a whole bunch because frankly, that'll be very fragile, but I'm gonna come in, oh, say about uh, three quarters of an inch from the mouth, draw a line, and draw a triangle. And that's gonna be our pectoral fin. And the, the triangle is, uh, oh goodness, maybe a quarter of an inch, oh, yeah, three eighths of an inch or so long. Okay, there it is, there's that little fin. And we can start by trying to etch that out. And to do that, I'm gonna create a V cut. Now this is into the side profile of the fish or the, the top down profile. So we'll make a V cut there starting at the end of the fin, going to the base of the fin where it attaches to the body, and then angling to create the stop cut of that fin, just like so. So going straight in and cutting to it. Boom, 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 boom. All right. And we can use the V tool to outline the top and bottom of that fin as well. And there it is. There's that pectoral fin. Okay, I'm going to uh, smooth the head. I'm going to come off the, uh, take that corner down on that side of the head here. So notice that I'm starting to taper that from the top view here, taper that head in. Just like so, and that's about enough right there. I don't think I need to go much uh, deeper than that for now. And I'm gonna to start to bring down the, the body here. The, there's no other real fins along the side here totally, except for that pectoral fin, or I'm sorry, pelvic fin. Pectoral fin. I'm making up fin names. Okay, and I'm taking a lot more out of that pelvic fin, or the caudal fin rather. One thing that's really fun you can do is give this a bit more of an angle, a forward angle. So I'm using a scooping motion here when I'm coming into this caudal fin. Notice I'm coming in and out like so. Just like so, and then I'll use the knife to take the back side of that fin, a little bit of that back side, that back corner, and notice how we're creating that lift. So I'm going to use the knife to, again, take the hard edges off around the whole surface of the body. Just round in those corners. And it starts with edges as we come back in through the fish and then taking each of those edges down. This is gonna get us to that 
semi round state. All right, now this uh, talked about this uh, fin here off to the side. Let's see. Let me look up my definitions. It's a there it is, pelvic fin. This pelvic fin kind of comes at toward us, out toward us. So I'm going to uh, come back underneath, turn this guy here. So this is this first one at the bottom here. And I'm going to angle it out. So I'm going to start by carving it, carving this uh, this back side of the fin, like so. Just like that. Okay. Once again, this is the pelvic fin. What we're doing here is we're kicking that fin out. So then I'm going to come back in front of the fin and do a little triangle cut here. Take a wedge out of it more than a triangle cut right in there. Now see how we're pulling that fin forward? So now when we come back in to taper this body to that fin, you'll notice that it looks as though the fin is kind of coming forward. That's what we're after there, okay? And then we'll make sure that we're taking those corners down off of the sides of the fish. Right. Very good. Now we'll take this uh, bottom fin, taper it back, just like so, because this one's going to sit at a different plane, as is this top one here. So we can take that back, just like so. Towards the middle of the body is where these uh, top fin, this dorsal fin. Just like that, all right? Okay, now I'm gonna take a little bit more out of this uh, this side fin here. What is this called? It's our uh, pectoral fin. And just triangle cut and then smoothing it into the body, just like so. Okay. And a little bit of an undercut. I don't want to get too carried away with undercuts because I don't want things to start breaking before I'm ready for detail and all that. But you can see I just came underneath there with an undercut. That means I take a little wedge. Here's the angle. Boop. And then I come the opposite way. Boop. Light pressure until a little chip comes out. Little amounts of wood. If you try to remove too much, you're going to end up breaking things. And uh, we don't want to break anything. All right, so it's at this point we're gonna come three quarters of an inch from the, well actually, uh, let's look at that, three quarters. Yeah, about seven eighths, honestly. About seven eighths from the, uh, from the front of the <laughs> mouth here. Ah, fish overboard. Okay, so we're just gonna mark it on the back side. It'll be easier to mark. So seven eighths right about there. And I'll just carry that line over. Right in front of that dorsal fin. I guess I didn't need to mark it. I could have just said right in front of that. I'm sorry, not dorsal fin, the pectoral fin. And I'm going to draw a circle, semicircle here. Okay, a little bit more of a point than just a circle, so almost like a U shape here. Okay, then I'm going to use my V tool to come around and to outline this shape. And it's going to wrap around the front here, like so. All the way around. And underneath, 
fish. This is where those gills are. Just like that, okay? And then we'll do a second layer, about uh, maybe an eighth of an inch ahead of that one. Another little line parallel to that one that we just carved. Not very deep at all. All right, now, excuse the light, we just changed that out because I realized that it was so dim. And uh, because it was dim, I missed that I had some corners up at the top that needed to get taken down. So I took some of the big flat corners and uh, I'm gonna recarve these lines here, just like that, all right? Now the eye is gonna sit uh, you know, about, uh, let's see, three eighths or so from the tip of the nose over. Just mark that, oh, there it is. A little X there. That's where that line is going to exist. See that? Okay. Uh, anyway, onward. I'm going to indicate the mouth opening here too while we're at it. I'm going to come uh, kind of splitting this front of the mouth, but with a slight upward turn. And I'll come in with the V tool, like so. And I'm just kind of opening it up. Coming from the back side so we can get that opening. About a quarter of an inch of depth here. In and then we'll come back in with our knife. Open that mouth up slowly. Clean that out like so. Taking these corners down, down, down. The trick is to make sure that you have a decent shape before you start adding too much of this to these lines. So, um, you know, the, the, the trouble is when you do that is you end up uh, taking material, uh, taking detail rather, and carving it away to get the shape right because you, you just added it prematurely. And I do that. Uh, I mean, here's an example of me adding detail probably a little bit too early. Probably should have made sure that my forms were nice and round before I did that. But, yeah, well, we got here and... Now I'm just trying to dance around it, dance around the problem here. That's okay. As long as we can try and maintain the, the position of those little grooves that we created, they're on the gills. We're in okay shape. All right, I don't think that's too bad. I'm gonna take a little bit more of this top area. I'm going to cut this at more of a, a T, this uh, that bottom fin, talked about the, uh, pec is not the pectoral fin, the pelvic fin. More of a sharper angle there as it comes out from the bottom, like so. And this one, we're going to carve this one back by coming underneath it. Again, that undercut, not going too thin here, pretty thin already, but we just want to maintain any final thinning to the edge, to the end rather, so we're not uh, at risk of, you know, destroying this thing, breaking it off.
All right, so we got that kind of uh, shaped out a little bit. And uh, a lot of what I'm doing is just coming back behind the, the, the I'm sorry, the fins and thinning them a little bit, getting them, you know, better, tr better transition to the body. So there's not as much uh, thickness there. That's I'm just going through and I'm thinning those. You can see that. And taking off corners as I go too. I don't want to see big, heavy, obvious angles, flat areas, I mean to say. Okay. All right. All right, so I've gone over the fish with the uh, knife and just kind of cleaned up some of the flat uh, areas. And now I'm going to use the the V tool to come in at the base of the gills and kind of go perpendicular, not quite perpendicular, but do a few passes of the gills. So little cuts here that go alongside of the gills. Little parallel cuts, just like so. Do five of them, so we one, two, three, four, Five or so. All right, go underneath the mouth. Yeah, now about uh, I'll say an eighth of an inch from the from the top, and what did we say? Three eighths of an inch from the front. We're gonna use the V tool to carve in the eyes. So let's punch up nice close here to the. Lens, do a little circle. Now typically you'll see a lot of guys who do bird carving or carving of this type is they'll actually they'll make uh, they'll get some resin and they'll put the resin eyes in. I need to put this eye back a little bit further. Let's see. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. I think that's fine. Like that, make that eye round. You can turn the fish, you can turn the V tool, turn everything. Whatever, whoever makes it easiest for you to get that little circle in place. Okay, just like that. Then we can use the knife to come in and smooth out the eyeball itself, giving that fish eye. Very cool. And a V cut around, going around the outline of the mouth to get give him the fish lips. Okay, and uh, it's at this point we can get you know more detailed with the eyes if we want to, and really clean that up. That's good enough for me for now. Okay, there's that. Okay. Now we're going to use this. Uh, v tool once again. I'm actually going to do a little light stropping on it because it seems to be kind of getting getting a little dull. So I've got my strop. I'm laying the blade, the cutting edge parallel to the strop, and I'm pulling it, pulling it against the strop, flipping it, trying to spend even time, flipping it about midway through my pass. I can get the inside of the bevel with this particular kind of strop because it has a nice little cut in it.
Okay, now we're gonna carve some uh, lines in here. So I'm gonna use the uh, V tool to come in. Create some thin texture, just like so. All right, how about that? And the same up top here. And in the back here as well. Using a scoop and cut at the end there to make sure we clean. We are, we are clean, our cuts are clean. And we can always use a little sandpaper to clean this up after the fact. Use the blade. Okay. Very nice. Go the opposite direction. Clean up any fibers that are holding on for dear life using that scooping motion. And then come the opposite direction. And uh, take a brush, if you have a brush nearby, and work those fibers up. Come alongside these other fins, detail them as well. Got a little chip, that's okay. There's another reason to, as I said, not add, get them too thin. I got carried away. I didn't take my own advice. Start at the root here and go outward. Sometimes you need to change direction. Just like that. Okay, now I'm going to use my texturing tool just to go all around. and down. Kind of makes the illusion of uh, uh, some texture at least, some scales. Doesn't have to look exactly like scales, but it still gives us the idea of a little texture. And this guy is so small that it doesn't need to be a lot for it to look like it's got some character. Go underneath the fins, don't want to forget under here.
Okay. You can use a little sandpaper on that if you want, but I'm content to leave it the way that it is. And you could really get carried away here with paint, and I think that could be really fun. I'm going to do a very light Don't sanding go. just Don't. on the surface <laughs> okay. of the uh, head. Today I like the idea of having a contrasting surface. This is a start to and uh, what I mean is I'm going to leave video. the knife edge, or the nice tools, knife surface on the body, knife, but I want the head to be kind of smooth because it seems like that's kind of how these fish look. These sort of smooth heads and then rougher scaled bodies. So we'll just go ahead and do that. And plus, we got a hairy, kind of fuzzy head anyway. We didn't clean it up to any real crazy extent. This might be, cuts here. This and, be a nice uh, way of getting us past that point it. of it looking but a little fuzzy first, and dirty. This video is sponsored by Fundamentals of Wood Carving. It's an online resource that I created to help folks learn to carve realistic portraits in wood, but it's expanded into all kinds of projects, including a puppy dog. I just added this one. So if you want to learn to carve uh, all sorts of things, including a Labrador Retriever relief carving, or uh, just a whole host of projects, including realistic portraits, like I said, uh, like this one, then check out the online school. This is there on the school and the link below. So that's that. Let's get into it. All right, and that's that. All right, now I've got a little bit of uh, a color palette here, uh, some acrylic paints I'm going to paint this with. And uh, I've got a couple of brushes. This is a flat, semi-round, um, and then this is a round. Now these are, gosh, I could say they're probably eighth inch or so. This one's uh, probably a quarter inch thick wide or so. And uh, I've got some water here. I've got some phthalo green. I've got some uh, bright red. I've got a uh, raw sienna here some titanium white and a little bit of black. And I feel like Bob Ross right now. Okay, so I'm gonna take, take uh, my, my wider bristle brush and do kind of a base coat of some white. I'm not gonna go too crazy with white and I could mix a little bit of raw sienna in there to take the edge off of it. And I'm gonna dilute it. I don't want it to be too heavy of a color. But I'm gonna use that raw sienna, tiny, tiny bit of that in that white just to dull it slightly. Again, I don't want it to be too intense. And mix some water in there. Kind of a wash. I don't want this to be too strong of a color. And I'm going to come at the belly here. I'm going to go for a, a very light, uh, kind of whitish tone under the belly, kind of close to the tone of the wood, honestly, so we could get away without this, but why not? We're here. A little bit of a whiter tone. Kind of avoiding the fins going in between them. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna grab a little bit more white, a little bit more of that pure white, and mostly white, but just even the tiniest touch of sienna from that dirty brush, and come underneath the mouth and just touch that mouth with some of that lighter, that lighter white. A little bit more water, it seems a little bit too opaque, thick. And kind of blend that in like so. That's good. Okay, now I'm going to take uh, some green. First of all, always good to have a uh, towel to to um, dry off your your, br your brush with, or a scrap piece of wood <laughs> to brush it off with. But anyway, I'm going to grab some of this thalo green. I'm going to mix in a little bit of that raw sienna and uh, create kind of a, a hunter's green. Just a tiny bit of red just to darken it up a little bit. A brown tone. Here, I should put this in camera so you can see what I'm doing here. A little bit of red, a little bit of phthalo green. Kind of now it's turning into more of an olive color. It was a hunter's green, now it's an olive, which is good, that darker tone. And we're gonna come across the top of the fish with that. You can get the top fin. That top fin can be dark green. I do a little bit more yellow in there in the mix. It's a little bit too drab. 
little bit more water. That's better. Just touch the green down here. And over to the nose as well. Okay, now I'm gonna mix a little bit of uh, red with the burnt sienna. This time we're gonna to go towards an orange, so kind of a middle spot between those two, just like that. And it looks good. And I'm gonna take a little bit of that, water it down, and do a really light wash on the bottom, the pectoral fin, the pelvic fin, and just barely touching uh, that, just like that. Bit there, and then let's do that. Uh, do that back fin a little bit there. Add a little bit of that yellow. Just like so. Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush, and I'm gonna take a little bit of the um, remaining paint, blend it in with a little bit of that water, like so. and dab off the excess. This makes it a little bit less pronounced, a little bit less uh, plastic looking. Dab off the excess there. Okay, we've got a good uh, base there. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the red, clean that brush off. I'm using the round, by the way. And I'm gonna grab, uh, of course, as I said, the red and a tiny bit of white. We're gonna mix a pink here. Again, water that down. Kind of a pinkish tone that white in there. And we'll water that down a little bit more. And just do a little touch, a little touch of a stripe of red in the middle here, that pink. A little bit more red there. A little bit more red there. Just a little wash, not a lot. light wash and then we'll put a little bit on the fins here on the fins I'm sorry on the uh, a little bit on the uh, body and we'll dab off the excess just to and lightly tone it just like that just like that and we can come back in with a little bit more of that red a little bit more of that red a little bit more of that white pink come back in with that stripe just like that And then once again, let that soak for just a couple of seconds and then dab off the excess, especially at the edges on this, on this pass through. Okay. Okay, and finally, I'm gonna take a light wash, uh, mostly phthalo green with a touch of yellow and just do a more green tone, really quick swipe at the bottom there. And uh, with a damp towel, I'll come back through and just blend that in. Just like so, really light undertone of green under there and that's kind of fun. Okay, now for the eyes, I'm gonna get in there with just a little bit of that orange that uh, we mixed earlier. Actually, I'm gonna have to remix it because it looks like we're a little uh, 
We're a little bit too um, white here. I added a little bit of white earlier, so I'm gonna take that, that red, and mix it with uh, that orange. Get some of that mixed together. That's gonna be our eye color. Like that, maybe just a touch of white. Okay, put that in the eye. Just using the tip of that uh, round brush. Go all the way around there. And we'll go with some black right in the center. This is where we're gonna take that black that we've got and uh, dilute it. We're gonna really dilute the black. We're gonna mix quite a bit up and we're gonna use the round brush. A smaller brush would be fine for this too. And we're gonna draw the, we're gonna uh, do the pupil there. And we're also gonna start doing some speckles all the way around this thing. So we'll do the pupil first. That's good. And then we're gonna do some speckles and we're gonna start at the top, a little bit heavier at the top and work our way down. It doesn't have to be perfect or totally uniform, just try to keep it random at the top of the fish. And we'll work our way down. Excuse the sound of that vacuum, my goodness. Cut a few down here as well. And we'll do a few on the fin as well. A little bit denser on the top and it kind of gets thinner as it goes up. A few up here too. Just like that. A few down at the bottom here. All right, guys, I successfully uh, painted this sucker and put a coat of gloss. I used a, a gloss urethane because it's what I have, but uh, any gloss finish will suit this carving really well. I hope you enjoy it, guys. I hope you make this thing and you send me a picture or tag me on Instagram if you make it. And I hope you have as much fun as I did making it. So see you guys in the next one. Check out Wood Carving Illustrated in the link below for some awesome uh, content on carving, uh, all things carving, information about uh, projects, uh, tools, equipment, setup, shop setup, uh, lots of great uh, carver bios there. Check that resource out in the link below. Use the code CARVER. And beyond that, guys, enjoy this carving, and I'll see you in the next one.